One of the hardest things about having a lot of animals is when you do lose them. Uh, this week we lost one of our chickens. I don't really know what happened there. Usually there's um, a reason why. This one in particular we called Lucy. She was kind of a bully in the flock and for a lot of the times didn't have much feathers. Um, but she finally started to grow them back and was looking better than she's actually ever looked. Super healthy, running around and spry. But I went up to lock the chickens up one night and unfortunately she was just dead. She was fine that morning and all day, so I don't really know what happened there because there wasn't any clear illness and no predators or anything like that. Sometimes they just get old and die, and it's unfortunate, but it is part of the circle of life. Um, that's one of the reasons we replenish the flock is so we do always have chickens and we don't have to go out and buy too many. And it's also kind of nice when you have like that favorite chicken, if you can incubate one of its babies, it's kind of nice just to kind of have that legacy. So hopefully one of the ones that we incubated was one of Lucy's and um, we'll get to have a part of her around. Stick around to the end and see how our incubator results turned out. When we incubate eggs, we do it all in the house and then we keep them in like a broder in the house until they're a um, couple weeks old. And if the weather permits and it gets a little bit warmer, which it looks like it might be, we do move them outside. And this is one of our areas where we keep them. I did just get this um, kind of raked out and added new bedding. Obviously it still needs feed, but we do have the heat lamp out here. So depending on what the temperatures will be at night, they'll move out here when they're probably, I don't know, six to eight weeks old. It's also nice because it's a good way to incorporate new animals and new chickens because then they actually, if you can see, we have chicken wire here so they actually get to see the other chickens and they get to know each other without any injuries and they do stay in there until they're old enough to be with the other ones, but it's a good way for them to um, meet and safely get incorporated. It's always worked out really well for us and we've been doing it this way for about five years. This is the outside of um, the little coop we keep the baby chickens in while they get incorporated into the flock. We did build this so then they could go in and out and get used to how that works. The door over there actually just flops up and we prop it with a bungee so then they can walk out when they want and forage and get used to it in a smaller area that's a little bit safer for them so they don't get have to deal with predators or anything and it's always worked out really well. It's one of my favorite things that we did build because when we're not using it for little chickens if one is sick or something we can always kind of quarantine it in this area too and it still can come out and go back in when it wants. <laughs> A couple of weeks ago we incubated some chicken eggs and so today I'm going to go through here and clean everything up and get it ready for the chickens and also show you how well it worked for us. After they hatch, we do leave them in the incubator for about 24 hours just so they can dry off and stay warm. And then after that 24 hour period, we take them out and we set them in here with the incubator still going in case we get some um, late bloomers. But right under here is a heat pad for them and that keeps them warm. So now I'm going to change out the pine and give them some fresh bedding now that we're taking the incubator out and um, give them a little more space because they're going to grow pretty quickly now. So we hatched um, all of ours with a leghorn rooster and then whatever um, chicken we have. So they're basically a barnyard mix. And then I did get a few marins because I wanted to add a few of those to the flock and it's a good time to mix them since they're the same age as the ones we hatched and it's just a good time to introduce them and they'll grow together. Um, you should have around an 85 to 90% success rate when incubating. However, 
when we did put in the original 16 eggs. So when we candled them, we realized that only seven of the 16 eggs were fertilized. So our success rate really wasn't that bad because we got five chickens out of um, seven fertilized eggs. I know I say this in a lot of our videos, but this is also one of my favorite uh, times of year is when we start incubating. I love waking up in the morning to a little chirp chirp, especially in the dead of winter um, when you're kind of getting sick of the snow and stuff and then you get to hatch some chickens. It just kind of brightens up the season and reminds you that spring's around the corner. It is going to happen and it's just a really fun project to do. The kids enjoy it. I enjoy it. You never know what you're going to get when you do a barnyard mix of eggs. So that is always really fun and exciting. And it's always good to just have more chickens to add to the flock. And it's a cheap, easy way to do it. And like I said, it just kind of brightens your spirit. And we know that spring's coming soon. So it's just fun. It's always hard to say goodbye when you lose an animal. It's a bummer. And it's just part of the way things go when you have a farm or a hobby farm. But on the bright side, it's also really exciting when you get to incubate your own chicks or even just buy new ones from the store and watch them grow up. It's a really exciting part and it's one of my favorite things we do here. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and please check out this one over here.